Here's Brody Brazil. I totally realize that usually an expectations type video like this one for any baseball team comes out before opening day, before a team has actually made their debut. Now, the Giants already have two games under their belt. I wanted to wait. I wanted to watch some games, some innings, some players and situations. Heck, I wanted to see who would actually make the opening day roster before I started to put forth some 2024 expectations for the San Francisco Giants. I mean, you think about their winter, the offseason, the change from the front office to the dugout to the player personnel on the field. There has been a lot going on, and now that the dust has settled, now that the season has got underway, the boat has pushed away from the dock, I think I'm ready to start putting forth some things that this team can hopefully live up to, including maybe the most important here, it's the 90 or more win mark for this team this season. I think that's where you have to start. I think that's where the bar has to be set. You get to 90, it also obviously gives you a pretty good chance of making the playoffs in some way, shape, or form. And it could be more than 90. That would be great. But I think 90 is where the bar has to be set. Now, they're coming off 79 from last season. That's close to the 500 record, but even at the end, the tailspin with the offense. And obviously, Gabe Kapler was let go before the season actually concluded. Now they're a much more complete team, a deeper roster. They've got a different manager. They've totally overhauled their club And I think when you look at most teams from season to season, unless they make major changes, jumping up or down 10 wins or 10 losses, no matter how you put it, from season to season, plus or minus 10, that's asking a lot if the roster doesn't change. But in this case, the roster has changed a lot for the better. There's been a lot of positive additions. And so because of that, I'm here to say that I think plus 11 wins is pretty realistic. Yeah, it's not that much from 79 to 90. In reality, in actuality, it is when you watch how the games unfold and how wins are created. But to actually get from 79 to 90, it's not a Herculean effort by any means. So I think it, the 90 win mark here is very possible for this team. 90 wins last season, by the way, if the Giants were to get there this year and last year plays out like this year would, the Giants would be the number one wildcard team in 2024. And again, playoffs or not, who knows what 90 wins gets you this year? Who knows what the division is going to be like? You obviously have what the Dodgers did in their offseason. You've got the Diamondbacks, who went to the World Series last year. You've got the Padres, who are certainly interesting. They're spending a lot less, but they're obviously interesting. So it's a crowded and hard-to-figure-out division. You know it's going to be competitive. You know the pitching staffs across the NL West are very tough. But starting at 90 wins puts you in that conversation of making the playoffs. If you get 90-something wins and you don't make the playoffs, that's tough sledding. Obviously, that's not something you want to accept. But I think once you surpass the 90-win mark, that's when you have to be pretty content about the team in a regular season. How about a 30-homer season? And I still can't believe this stat Every time I hear it, and it's been going on for quite some time, that the Giants have not had a 30 home run hitter since Barry Bonds did it in 2004. But you've got the potential. You've got the the horses to get you there this year. Jorge Soler, he hit 36 dingers last year. Matt Chapman hit 36 back in 2019. He's already got one under his belt this season. Conforto had 33 also in 2019. And maybe there's a surprise candidate here that I'm missing. It's hard to believe that the Giants won all those World Series in a five-year span and they didn't even have a 30-home run hitter for any of those teams in any of those years. But getting one of those guys for a season like this, I'm, I'm kidding you not, I watched the Oakland A's do it. They'd win games via the long ball. Somebody on, somebody homers, there's two runs, you win by one. That one swing at the bat was the difference maker. And So five homers here, five homers there, slimmest of margins here and there. Home runs are valued greatly in Major League Baseball in this current day and age. And so the Giants, to be successful, they need to break this streak. They need to have a 30 home run hitter this season. And it could be any one of these names. It could be somebody else. But I think for them to ultimately have team success, they need a couple players to flirt with that 30 number, but they definitely need somebody to surpass it. I also think that this team needs to have a Cy Young finalist. Now, they did last year. Logan Webb finished second 
in National League Cy Young votes, only behind Blake Snell, who won it with the Padres, who's now a member of the Giants, who also won it in 2018 in the American League with Tampa Bay. He's one of only seven, I believe, Cy Young Award winners in both the American and National League. And then eventually, hopefully after the All-Star break or right around there, you'll get Robbie Ray, who was the 2021 American League Cy Young winner. And it's no disrespect to Hicks or Cobb or anybody else or Harrison in the rotation. This could be the most complete rotation the Giants have seen in quite some time. But they're going to be a successful team if they at least have one Cy Young finalist. I'm not even saying they need to have the winner. They've got a lot of potential here, but they need to have somebody emerge and put themselves in that Cy Young award winner conversation of the National League. That'll let you know that they've got a leader of the staff. And if it's Webb, great. If it's Snell, great. Robbie Ray is certainly not going to have enough games pitched this year to enter into that conversation. If Harrison surprises and gets to where people think he could be, that's awesome too. But this team needs somebody like that in the rotation. I also think this team really this year needs to develop their next shortstop. Obviously, that was a spot that was taken since 2011. And it's weird to see Brandon Crawford playing for the Cardinals. Obviously. But it's a new era. It's a new page. Nick Ahmed made the the team out of camp. He's their opening day shortstop. He drove in the first couple runs of the season, by the way. I don't know if that's a long-term fit when you've got Marco Luciano waiting in the wings. He's 22 years old. He's the number two prospect in the franchise, in the pipeline. And eventually he's going to get his chance. And I, I hate to put that writing on the wall for somebody like Nick Ahmed, But he's a veteran. He understands why he's here, what he's doing here. He's not wasting any time. He's not wasting the opportunity either. If Ahmed is your shortstop and he's keeping things moving, then Luciano's just going to have to wait until the time is right. Obviously, you want to bring him in when you think he's ready. But at this point, manager Bob Melvin had the quote, he's just not apparently ready. He said, quote, Lucy was playing well there at the end, but we still feel like maybe there's some development defensively. I think his bat is going to play here right now. Just get a little bit more comfortable at the shortstop position. That's kind of the decision there at this point, end quote, said Bowmel. So it would be great if over the course of this season, you could get who is probably your inevitable next shortstop to be that guy at this season. But it's a it's a careful balance. You don't want to rush him. You don't want to complicate the matter, especially when your team is in contention, right? Like it's a, it's a little bit of a balancing act. It's almost like you're... Your server at a restaurant, your waiter at a restaurant who's carrying all the meals at once and bringing out, you know, dinner for eight in two hands. Just make sure you get it to the table. You don't want to drop one thing and then all of a sudden spill the rest. Was that a good analogy or not? I'm still not sure. I made it. We're moving on. Jung Hu Lee. I would love to see him hit 280. And after watching the first couple games, I think he could do it. Man, he doesn't strike out. He makes contact. He's constantly hitting the ball to the outfield. This was supposed to be a transitional season for Jung Hu Lee, right? Coming over from the KBO, you don't really know what to expect. What's the conversion rate on batting average? Yeah, that's not Major League Baseball over there in Korea. This is the best league in the world. How would his average and performance go from one continent to another? And this is the first of a six-year deal for Jung Hu Lee and the Giants, but maybe instead of a transitional year, maybe he's more ready than anybody thought. Maybe he's arriving literally ahead of schedule because you sign him for that long and you're, you're, you're really buying in on what you know and think he could be over the long term. But what if he's here performing already? He just throws the bat to the ball. I mean, he's got that Ichiro swing from the left side and he's just making contact all the time. He hit 340 with a 407 on base percentage in the KBO. I'm literally taking off 60 points. From his batting average. And you know what? He might hit 285, 287, 292, whatever. I'm saying 280 is the expectation. 280 is kind of the baseline. I'm knocking off 60 points. That's a lot. I think he's better than that. I think he's already shown that. I'll take a fraction of that 340 batting average and most of that 407 on base percentage. He's not going to steal a lot of bases. I thought he might be one of those guys, but looking at his past in the KBO, 14 to 17 swipes a year per full season. But if he can get on base, if he can provide you with that good, imperative defense out there in center field, then I think he's a great player. 
That's a great season. I think 280 is where you start. You want to get Jung Hoo Lee on base consistently. Camilo Duvall, 40 plus saves in 2024. Now, he hit 39 last year. And again, we know that at the very end of the season, the team wasn't scoring runs, had trouble winning games. There's no save situations when you're not, you know, winning the game. If the team gets better, they're going to need to win more close games, more save situation type games. Hence, Doval's number is going to go up from 39 to passing 40. And I also think, you know, you look at the Giants roster and how they built their team this year. Their lineup is better offensively. Defensively, they're better. Their rotation is better. Is the bullpen that much better, significantly better than it was last year? It's a critical part of of a season, of a long season, of your bridging the gap from your starters to a guy like Camilo Duvall. So the setup guys and the bullpen before your closer need to help get Duvall get to, get to 40 saves. I think he's an underrated asset of the team. Everybody talks about why they're going to do this and why they're going to do that. It's never a conversation, and I've been paying a lot of attention to what people are talking about. They always seem to miss on Camilo Duvall or forget about him until it's time for those final three outs. I think the Giants are lucky to have somebody uh, somebody like him with put-away velo to be closing out games. So I'm looking at 40 or more saves for Duvall. And I also think an expectation of this baseball season is that when the trade deadline comes around, I think it's July 30th this year, It's just going to be a quiet deadline. Even if the Giants are motoring along, doing their thing, they're on pace for the playoffs. I think after this past winter, the commitments made, how that went, I think they're probably not buying. Now, that's not here to say that they won't make some additions and they won't try and get what they need to make sure they get to the playoffs. Because, yeah, my last point here is that I think that anything they do will largely be determined by their chance to make the playoffs. Wild card, division, whatever it is. I don't think that they're really honing in on the future, like two years down the road right now. They're going to try and get to the playoffs if they're that close. They'll make the moves that are corresponding to that. But another reason I think it's going to be a quiet deadline, they're not going to be necessarily buying or selling by any means. You're likely to get Robbie Ray back. He's got the UCL injury after the All-Star break. I don't think before. I think after the All-Star break. And you're obviously likely to get Alex Cobb back. He's been dealing with the torn, torn labrum recovery. Should be back. In May, So you're already getting some boosts along the way from opening day towards the middle of this baseball season. And that's why I think there are some inherent built-in like acquisitions. Robbie Ray is almost going to be like a trade deadline acquisition that you didn't have to pay for. You've already paid that cost. You've already bought into what you're getting there. So I don't think even if this is, you know, a closely contended NL West standings down the stretch, I don't think the Giants are going to want to move and shake a whole bunch at the trade deadline rather than going with what got them there. And if it's on pace, maybe some small pieces here or there, but not really buying, certainly not selling in in either direction. So those are my expectations for this 2024 Giants season. It's interesting. And I know we're all watching the first couple series to figure out, well, who are these guys? How do they come together? How do they fit? You'll really, I think, have an idea by May or June. All those things I just mentioned there, you'll be able to kind of check the boxes. Is this going to plan? Check. Is this going to plan or not? Check or no check. You're going to be able to kind of run down that list. Right now, way too early to judge on those things, but pretty soon you're going to have a much more clear idea. You made it here to the end of the video. You know I appreciate that. Thumbs up down below. And also don't forget to subscribe to this channel so I can definitely... See you back here next time.